Shalom. Welcome to the Shepherd's Light Online Church. Before the service starts, we wanted to invite you to join our chat. The chat is where you can ask questions, share verses, and connect with other viewers from around the world. Just write your first comment and choose the nickname to join. If you need prayer, click the live prayer icon and you'll be taken to a private chat where one of our team members will pray with you. The service is about to start. Don't forget to sign up so you can keep your username and profile. God bless you and enjoy the message.
Shalom, Nashimi Takot. Manishma. Hello, sweet women. How are you? Oh, I wish we were together, but I'm so thankful we can do this. I hope you had a great week. Um, get something warm to drink. It is cold outside, and Geshem Bay Po, it's raining here, and I know it's raining in a lot of other areas. Um, Israel's been having a lot of rain. So, stay warm and cozy. Anilishtot um, te im lemon ve zingavil. I'm drinking tea with lemon and ginger. And I'm just learning the word, Hebrew word for ginger. So for you Hebrew speakers, I hope I said it right. It was zingavil. So let me know if that's wrong, but hopefully it's right. Anyway, get something hot to drink and let's start seeing what the Lord has for us. I'm already just by studying, learning a lot that I didn't realize. So I hope you are too. I love how the Lord teaches us. And remember last week when we were studying Hebrews 2, we talked about being careful not to drift away from our walk with the Lord and how easy that can happen. And it says, to keep this from happening, we must listen very carefully to the truth we have heard. And it didn't say that you know, it insinuated that not only listen, but do what it says. So get something to drink and let's turn to Hebrews 3 and see what the Lord has for us. It says, And so, dear brothers and sisters who belong to God and are partners with those called to heaven, think carefully about this Yeshua, Jesus, whom we declare to be God's messenger and high priest. For he was faithful to God who appointed him, just as Moshe, Moses, served faithfully when he was entrusted with God's entire house. So remember this book of Hebrews was written to Jewish believers although it applies to you and me also, but it was specifically written to Jewish believers, you know, soon after Yeshua died and was risen again, you know, within a generation. And, and so knowing that, the Jewish believers would have been raised in Judaism, and so they would have known the role the function of what a high priest did. And they understood what just that word meant, especially concerning the high priest um, on the Day of Atonement and how the high priest was the one that would make atonement for them and by offering, you know, blemish-free sacrifices. And next week we'll talk more about that. But for now, you know, just know that they would automatically know what that meant. And so in this letter in Hebrews, the author is saying to seriously think about the fact that Yeshua, Jesus, is our high priest. I mean, isn't that so amazing to think about? In the Tanakh, the Old Testament, God specifically set out everything as far as the duties of a high priest and the qualification to become a high priest, right? And like I said, we'll talk about more 
next week about the high priest part. But I did love this. In Psalm 99, verse 5 through 8, it says, Exalt the Lord our God, bow low before his feet, for he is holy. Moshe, Moses, and Aaron, Aaron were among his priests. So Moses and Aaron were among his priests. Actually, they were, Aaron was the first one. And Shmulek, Samuel, also called on his name. They cried to the Lord for help, and he answered them. He spoke to Israel from the pillar of cloud, and they followed the laws and decrees he gave them. O Lord our God, you answered them. You were a forgiving God to them, but you punished them that went wrong. So, you know, he was talking about Moshe and Aaron and Shmulek, Moses, Aaron, and Samuel. So, um, I love how in different places in the Bible it talks about who was the high priest. So, let's continue on in Hebrews chapter 3, verse 3. And it says that Yeshua, Jesus, deserves far more glory than Moshe, just as a person who builds a house deserves more praise than the house itself. For every house has a builder, but the one who built everything is God. Don't you love that? Because, I mean, we would have nothing if it wasn't for God. Moshe was certainly faithful in God's house as a servant. His work was an illustration of the truths God would reveal later. So, you know, they're showing, hey, Moshe was important. God used him greatly because he loved the Lord with all his heart and he obeyed God. And then in verse 6 it says that Christ, Yeshua, as the Son, is in charge of God's entire house. And we, we are God's house. If we keep our courage and remain confident in our hope in Christ Yeshua. So in other words, remember last week we talked about how it was saying how Yeshua is the most important. He's the one who deserves praise. Last year, I mean last year, last week in chapter 2, it was saying, hey, he's far more important than the angels. Because remember, they were worshiping angels during this time. And don't forget, Moses, Moshe, was instrumental in the Jewish faith. I mean, you can ask any Jewish person, and you watching that are Jewish, you know, who the person of Moses, Moshe, is. And they're easily going to be able to tell you. And it was through Moses that we were given the Ten Commandments and also the laws. It was all through Moshe. God told and talked to him. And he was and still is held in ex very high ex esteem, you know. And that's, and that's good. I mean, he should be. He's a good example to us. And God, through the book of Hebrews, though, he wanted to remind people, hey, Moshe was so faithful, and God used him mightily. But of all, we should be careful not to put him on a pedestal, you know, where he's higher than the Lord Yeshua. And we need to remember Moshe was human, just like you and I are. You know, he sinned, and... He had to ask the Lord for forgiveness. Remember, because of his sin, he wasn't even able to go to the promised land. Joshua led the people in instead. And it didn't mean that God loved him any less. It just meant God had to punish him. And, you know, so Moshe would be the first one to agree, hey, I'm just a man. I mean, remember it said how humble he was. And... He loved the Lord, and he was just like you and I. And if we're sold out to God, God is able to use us mightily for his glory. 
And Moses, Moshe would be the first one to say, hey, don't ever put me above Yeshua. And only Yeshua is worthy of our praise. Because remember in Philippians chapter 2, verse 9 through 11, it says, Therefore God elevated him, Yeshua, to the place of highest honor and gave him the name above all other names, that at the name of Yeshua, Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and in earth and under the earth, and every tongue declare, Yeshua, Jesus Christ, is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And don't you love that? There will be a time that comes that every single person will say that and give glory to him because they'll know and see the truth. So as faithful as Moshe was, he was just a man. And there is no comparison to Yeshua. And for most of you listening to this study, you know, it's difficult to imagine putting Moshe on a pedestal above the Lord, right? But remember that until Yeshua was born, Moses was the one that all the Jewish people looked for or looked at and remembered what he said because he was God's instrument. God used him to speak God's heart to the people, to the Israelites. And so now, you know, there's Yeshua's come and there's new believers in him. And so God's like, hey, I need to have you write this book, whoever wrote this book of Hebrews, and let them know and remind them that Yeshua is above the angels. He's above Moshe. Don't put anybody else in his place. And remember, we last week we talked about what it must have been like to suddenly go from the old covenant to the Ha Brit Hadashah, the new covenant that God gave in the freedom of the Lord dying in our place. And so they needed to be reminded, hey, you're not under the law anymore. You have freedom. And we talked a lot about that last week. And think about everything Yeshua suffered for you and for me. And he went through so much. And he did it freely because he loves us. And because, like we talked about last week, the penalty of sin, which we all sin, is death. But the free gift of God is eternal life through Yeshua. He's the only way. And so where last week we talked about him being more important than the angels who people worshipped at that point of time when it was written. Now the author's reminding us he's more important than even Moshe, Moses. So, um, you know, I started thinking, it's like, it's difficult for me to see, well, why would somebody put angels or Moshe, Moshe, Moshe <laughs> Moses, <laughs> above Yeshua? right? Why would they worship him and, and think more of him than they would of the Lord God Almighty, um, Yeshua? And yet I started thinking, don't I and don't you sometimes put things more important? You know, I started thinking, what is the first thing I think of when I wake up? You know, is my heart, my mind set on the Lord? when I go to sleep at night and when I wake up. And when I go read my Bible and spend time with the Lord, sometimes what are my thoughts? Am I thinking, oh, I don't have time to do this. I really should be doing this instead. It's a really busy day. Or am I excited 
that first love that we talked about last week? Am I excited to have the privilege of spending time with the Lord, knowing it says he hears us and he answers, and he longs for our fellowship? Do I have that excitement in me? Or am I like, oh, I guess I better do it to get over, get it over with. Or do I even not do it, you know? And then I felt like the Lord was asking too, just like he told Abraham, Abraham to sacrifice his son, Isaac, Isaac, do I, if he asked me that, would I be willing to do that? to someone I loved? Would I be willing to give them, release them to the Lord? You know, what would you say if the Lord asked you to do that? And, you know, so I started thinking, it's so easy to put things before the Lord. And He knows our heart, and He knows our desire, and He knows I desire to put Him first. But he shows me periodically things that I'm putting before him. You know, instead of reading the Bible, do I like, oh, I think I'll look at social media for a while. And then I get carried away and I'm, you know, an hour's past or however long, 15 minutes. Um, you know, I have a dear, dear friend who I've known for years. And she loves the Lord totally and completely. And her adult daughter doesn't want anything to do with her and told her she didn't want her, my friend, to have anything to do with her grandkids, her grandchildren. Um, and the mother's reasoning, her daughter's reasoning, is she said to her mom, Ema, you talk about the Lord too much. And I don't want my children around someone who talks about the Lord all the time. And so my friend had a choice. She could say, okay, I'll check it. I won't talk anymore about God, about Yeshua. But she couldn't do that. He's her best friend. He's her Lord and Savior. And she told her daughter, I can't promise that because I love the Lord with all my heart, and my desire is that you and my grandchildren, because she's a softa, right? That my grandchildren would know him. And so she didn't get to see her daughter or her grandchildren for years. So recently, her oldest grandson, who was around 10 um, at the time that this happened, um, eight or 10, um, he came, he's now 18, and he knocked at her door and he said, Safta, I'm your grandchild. And actually because of Facebook, she got to see what he looked like as he was growing. So she recognized him right away. But he told her, he said, I'm 18 now and I can make my own choices. I want to get to know you. And I want to get to know the Lord that you know. Isn't that just like heart wrenching? And what a blessing that God did in my friend's life that she now has a relationship with her grandson. And so, you know, just pray that the Lord will open the door to have a relationship again with her daughter, that the Lord will touch her daughter. And she will, because she knows the Lord, but it's more like, okay, you know, I'll pray, I'll go to the congregation once in a while. But as far as a personal relationship, she doesn't. And so her grandson, you know, my friend is Safta Shilo. It's his grandmother. And what a blessing. So keep them in prayer. 
but she made that choice and we all in one way or the other have to make those choices you know well here's a group of friends and so you know a group of people and so they all swear so maybe I should start swearing so I'll fit in or all they drink a lot so I'll go to the bar and drink with them so I'll fit in and I can share about the Lord they don't need that people need to see a difference they need to see a difference in you and me us that know the Lord because that's what they want so anyway let's continue in Hebrews chapter 3 verse 7 and it says this is why the Holy Spirit says today when you hear his voice don't harden your heart as Israel did when they rebelled, when they tested me in the wilderness. There your ancestors tested and tried my patience. Remember, it's God speaking. Even though they saw my miracles for 40 years. So I was angry with them. And I said, your hearts always turn away from me. They refuse to do what I tell them. So in my anger, I took an oath. They'll never enter my place of rest. So in verse 12, be careful then, my dear brothers and sisters, make sure that your own hearts are not evil and unbelieving, turning you away from the living God. So in other words, check our hearts, you know, and and how do we harden our hearts? How do we get that part way? You know, as you know, it rarely, rarely happens overnight. It's a slow process. Satan knows how to do it slowly, slowly. It's like, I've heard people say, it's like being in a pot of boiling water. It's cool when you get in it, and then it gets a little warm but it still feels good and it gets warmer and warmer until it's boiling but it happens so slowly and you know it it starts by putting things before the Lord like we've been talking about for example I know I should spend time with the Lord right every day if I have a little time spend a little time with them if I have a lot of time spend a lot of time with them and through the day just talk to him like you would your best friend and listen to him but if I'm extra busy I would say ah, I'll read my Bible and pray tomorrow Lord I just don't have time today and then I'd go about my business and then the next day, it'd be even busier. So I'm like, oh, you know, okay, well, tomorrow I'll spend time with you. I just don't have time today. And I know I should spend time with you, but I just don't have time. And then by the end of the week, you're like, oh, it has been such a crazy busy week. I know I told the Lord I'd spend time with him today, but... I'll spend time with you tomorrow because today I just want to veg. I want to lay on the couch and do nothing but watch movies. And time goes by, right? And you haven't talked to the Lord. You haven't listened to him. You haven't read your Bible. And you say, oh, I know he'll understand. He's so busy. So can you relate to that? Because sadly, there's been times I've done that. But you know what? It only hurts you and me. It only hurts ourselves. I mean, it saddens God, but it hurts us. Think about it. Instead of using the word spending time with the Lord, replace it with the word eat or eating food, right? And so you start putting things before eating. For example, I know I should eat today, but I'm so busy, so I'll eat tomorrow and I'll just get everything done today. And then it's the next day and I'm like, oh, I know I should eat, but it's even busier today than it was yesterday. So I'm going to not eat until tomorrow and I'm just going to work and try to get everything done. And day by day happens 
and I haven't eaten anything. And then I'm like, oh, I'm so tired that it's been such a busy week that I'll eat something tomorrow. Today I'm just going to lay around and veg and watch movies. How would you feel? How would your body feel? Wouldn't it become weak? You know, your body would respond by becoming very weak. You'd be lightheaded, a little dizzy, a little faint feeling, and you wouldn't be able to be productive in what you needed to do and what God called you to do. You'd be weak. Somebody could just push you over with a, you know, with their finger. Probably not after a week, but after a while. But in the same way, we physically need to take care of our body by giving it the food that it needs. We need to take care of our spirit, our soul, by feeding and nourishing God's word. And, you know, it's so, so important. And think about it that way. Would you go without food just because you were busy? I'm not talking about fasting, just because you're busy. <laughs> and it's easier when you're in a weakened state to listen to the lies of the devil. So, in Hebrews chapter 3, verse 13, it goes on with that theme, and it says, You must warn each other every day while it is still today, so that none of you will be deceived by sin and hardened against God. You know, that's why we need to be sure to be doing what Ephesians 6, verse 18 through 20 says, tells us to do. It says, pray in the Spirit at all times and on every occasion. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. So it's so important to be praying and encouraging each other. You know, when you're having a hard time, or even if you're having a great time, isn't just even a smile, a kind word from someone, doesn't that so encourage you and just lift your spirit up? And, you know, it's so important to stay in that fellowship. And then... I love what Hebrews 3, the next verse, verse 14 says, happens when we are faithful to the Lord. It says, For if we're faithful to the end, trusting God just as firmly as when we first believed, we will, not maybe or might, but will share in all that belongs to Christ. Remember what it says, Today, when you hear his voice, don't harden your heart as Israel did when they rebelled. And who was it who rebelled against God, even though they heard his voice? Wasn't it the people Moshe, Moses led out of Egypt and who made God angry for 40 years? Wasn't it the people who sinned, whose corpses lay in the wilderness? And to whom was God speaking when he took an oath that they would never enter his rest? Wasn't it the people who disobeyed him? So we see that because of their unbelief, they were not able to enter into his rest. I mean, think about that. You know, when you have time, sit and read about, read that yourself and pray about it. Let's turn to Hebrews 4, because it talks more specifically about what we just read, explains it in more detail. Verse 1 in chapter 4 says, God's promise of entering his rest still stands. So we ought to tremble with fear that some of you might fail to experience it, to experience God's rest. For this good news that God has prepared, this rest, has been announced to us just as it was to them, you know, the original Israelites. But it did them no good 
because they didn't share the faith of those who listened to God. You know, remember um, Moses and Aaron and um, Joshua and Caleb, they all believed God. And remember when Joshua and Caleb went and scouted out the land and they're like, it's a land of milk and honey, just like God said. And yes, there's giants. Yes, there's scary people. But God said he would go before us and, and we would be victorious in getting the land. And the people didn't believe him. And because of that, God had to punish them and they weren't able to go into the promised land of rest. Instead, they kept having to wander around for 40 years. And so this is, you know, this last part of this verse that we just read said, it did them no good because they didn't share the faith of those who listened to God. And so I looked up the word rest in the um, Merriam Dictionary, and I loved it. It said, for the definition of rest, it said, peace of mind or spirit. Don't you love that? Peace of mind or spirit. And, you know, we can never achieve this rest through works of law. It's impossible. And God showed us the parallel, the difference. And so we know we can't do that. So let's read Hebrews 4, chapter, or chapter 4, verse 3. And it continues saying, For only we who believe can enter his rest. Now remember, he's talking to believers, right? As for the others, God said, In my anger I took an oath, they'll never enter the place of my rest. Even though this rest has been made ready since he made the world. We know it's ready because of the place in the scripture where it mentions the seventh day. On the seventh day, God rested from all his work. But in the other passage, God said, they'll never enter the place of rest. So God's rest is there for people to enter. But those who first heard the good news failed to enter because they disobeyed God. It's going back to talking, you know, when he brought them from Egypt to the promised land and they wouldn't go in. And they weren't able to enter the promised land because they did not believe what God told them. And instead of having faith in God's promises to them, you know, that he would protect them and bring them into the land, go before them, and instead of believing that, they started looking, their eyes focused, instead of on God and his promises, it focused on how powerful the enemy was. You know, oh, there's their giants there. And so sadly, because of their unbelief, it kept them from entering into that full, rich life that God had for them, that God desired to have them experience. Instead, they wandered, and I know they were tired, right? So Hebrews chapter 4, verse 7 continues. It says, So God set another time for entering his rest, and that time is today. God announced this through David, David much later in the words he already quoted. Today, when you hear his voice, don't harden your heart. So God's having the author of Hebrews repeat what David, David had said. And it's in Psalm 95, verse 7 through 8. And David wrote, David wrote, For he is our God. We are the people he watches over, the flock under his care. If only you would listen to his voice today. The Lord says, don't harden your heart as Israel did at Meribah and as they did at Massah in the wilderness. So do you see how many times it's being quoted today? Today enter his rest. 
In other words, today believe his promises, believe his word, trust him and have faith in him because that's where your rest will come from. Remember Yeshua said, peace I give to you, not as the world gives, give I unto you that peace, that rest in the Lord. So let's continue. Hebrews chapter four, verse eight says, now if Joshua, okay, so now it's switching to Joshua. Now if Joshua has succeeded in giving them rest, God would not have spoken about another day of rest still to come. So there's a special rest still waiting for the people of God. For all who have entered into God's rest have rested from their labors, just as God did from creating the world. So let us do our best to enter that rest. But if we disobey God, as the people of Israel did, we will fall, okay? So Joshua was the man who God appointed to lead the people into Israel. You know, he took over, he had been Moshe, Moses's, um, you know, assistant for years. And now he is in charge leading people into the promised land. But even then, they didn't get to rest, right? And so the rest that God wants us to experience is the rest that you can get when you know you're his child, when as a believer, you know, knowing that he's done all the work, he's done the work of salvation for us. Our sins are forgiven because of him. All we have to do is accept that promise from him. He paid the price for my sin, for your sin. And, you know, we're free from that. Oh, sweet women, we're free from that. Think about what that means. And have you noticed there's times in your life, even as believers, where we don't have rest in our souls? You know, we tend to be worried, we tend to be anxious, we tend to be scared. Um, everything that's the total opposite of the definition of rest. And we don't have to be that way. Over and over, both in the Tanakh, Ve Habrit Hadashah, the Old Testament and the New Testament, God's telling us to enter his rest that verse I just said about Yeshua giving us peace, you know, that's God's rest. It says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything, you know, for praying and praise to the Lord. In other words, and you know it works, as hard as it is to turn your mind and thoughts off your circumstances and onto the Lord by singing his praises. And God's rest his peace comes because we're trusting him in what he says. He promises to care for us. He promises to provide everything we need. And if we obey and believe that in our heart, then we have God's rest. We've entered into his rest. And in 1 John 4.4, 4, we talked about this last week too. It says, but you belong to God, my dear children. You have already won a victory over those people because the spirit who lives in you is greater than the spirit who lives in the world, which is the devil. You know, and I love how, you know, because it's one thing to say it and it's harder to do it, to have that rest, to have that peace in the midst of a trial, in this crazy, crazy world that seems to be getting darker all the time. But it's having that faith and knowing that God's word is truth. And I love what it says in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12 and 13. It says, for the word, and really think about what this says, for the word of God is alive and powerful. 
God's word is alive and powerful. It's sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword, cutting between soul and spirit, between joint and marrow. It exposes our innermost thoughts and desires. Nothing, nothing in all creation is hidden from God. And you know that, sweet women. God knows everything. And then it goes on, it says, everything is naked and exposed before his eyes, and he is the one whom we're accountable to. And don't you want him? He's done so much to us. Don't you want to just bless him by believing what he says when he tells us not to worry, when he tells us not to be anxious? when he tells us just to rest in him so that he can give us his rest. And how important he's saying in all of this, be in my word. My word is the truth. My word will do everything. It'll tell you everything you need to do. It shows us our hidden sins. It shows us our inner, innermost thoughts and desires. It shows us how God takes care, example after example of how he cared for people in the same way he desires to care for you and me. You know, we find rest by every single day. And like I said, whether we have a little time or a lot of time to be in his word, no excuses. Just like we'd eat to get that nourishment for our body, we need to eat. God's word. And then he tells us to, he takes care of every detail because he loves us so much. And the more we're in his word, the more we see how much he loves us. And that we don't have to be fearful. We don't have to be anxious. We don't have to be worried and scared. You know, he speaks to us through his word. And I can vouch for that. Times that I've been so worried where are we going to get money for food? How are we going to pay the rent? What am I ever going to get well? Or is Stephen ever going to get well? You know, all these what ifs. And God knows how we feel. We talked about last week. It's one of the reasons that the Lord came to the earth as a baby and died and rose again for us. He experienced everything we go through. He knows, sweet sister, what you're going through. It's not coming as a surprise to him. And he's got you in his hand. And he knows your past, he knows here and now, and he knows your future. And he's not going to let you go. And you can enter into his rest. But it's a choice. And it's not always an easy choice. You know, when... Satan puts those thoughts of what if, or tomorrow the rent's due, or tomorrow how am I going to eat, or you know feed my kids, or whatever the, those thoughts that aren't from God, that are taking away your rest in the Lord. Immediately stop and make your mind, as hard as it is, focus on the Lord. You know, memorize verses and let verses go through your mind. Put on praise music and if, you know, sing those songs to the Lord. Worship the Lord. Get your mind off this and on to Him. And thankfully, He can read our, our minds. And if we're at work, we're with other people and we can't start building out a song, a worship song, or, or playing it or something. We can do it in our mind. We can do verses in our mind. We can talk to him on our mind. And he knows. And it gets our thoughts. And you see so many times that King David, David, in the Psalms, where it started out, oh no, oh woe is me, you know, all these problems. And then he stops himself and puts his thoughts on the Lord. And you can tell the difference in the rest of that psalm. Because God will give you his rest, his peace, as we do that. 
And that's an obedience to what God's telling us to do. But you know what? Maybe you're not his daughter, sweet woman. Maybe you don't know the Lord and you don't know his rest, his peace that he gives you, that he desires to give you, that we've read in chapter three and four, how much he desires to give you that rest. And so if that's you, Romans six, verse 22 says, or I'm sorry, 23 says, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Yeshua, Jesus, our Lord. It's a free gift, but like any gift, if I give you a gift, you'd have to receive it, right? You wouldn't put your hands behind you and say, no, I don't want that. Or if I have it out to you and you just don't bother to take it, it's the same thing. You didn't want my free gift. But I promise you, you'll never be sorry receiving this gift from the Lord of eternal life, living forever with him, of him walking with you here and now on this earth, helping you in every aspect, giving you peace, his peace, his rest in everything you do, in every trial you go through, the good and the bad times. So if you do that, just call out to him, tell him you're sorry for your sins, Thank him for taking them upon himself and, and getting rid of your sins. And tell him you want to live your life for him, that you want to be his daughter. It's so precious. And if you've done that, we would love to know about it and rejoice with you. And if you need a Bible, just let us know. We can get it in pretty much any language that... Um, is your first language that's easiest for you to read. So don't hesitate to do that. So let's keep each other in prayer this week, hopefully stay warm and cozy. And um, anyway, I'd love to um, stay, hopefully you can stay around and chat for a while, either on YouTube or Facebook or um, Church Online. And I love that God gives us all this media to do this with and hopefully we can get back together yom shishi on friday pastor stephen is in the book of mark so keep each other in prayer and remember to be in his word and rest in the lord god bless you
Jesus, we love you. 